Hi guys, my name's Craig. Welcome to Small Farmer Life. It's a lovely day today. It was a nice frost on the ground when I came out, but the sun's out now and it's melted it away. But it's a lovely day. Ground's still solid a bit under my feet, which I'm happy about. Anyway, guys, before I go any further, I want to know what you guys think about me starting a Patreon page because I want to make the videos better for you guys so you'll have a better experience watching them. And also, I'm having to answer a lot of questions and people are getting on to me through social media and I'm, it's taking me a lot of time away from my farm. Now, I want to answer as many questions to you guys as possible. Some people have benefited immensely from my information and I've even had a couple of donations to PayPal for actually the information that I've taught people and helped people with. But anyway guys, I just want to know what you think about that, you can leave it in the comment section below. But anyway guys, what's the biggest barrier to entry for small farms? Now, we're not talking about huge farms here with houses already on them or small holdings and things like that. We're talking about people who have some savings and they want to live some of the good life or they want to start a business in the countryside and they want to live on the land. Well, this can be one of your biggest nightmares ever if you're trying to do it. And it can cause a lot of stress in your life, which you don't need. And there's one, one organisation that causes small farmers not going into farming. And obviously they have a job to do. And this is why I need you guys to subscribe to this channel so I can go down and lobby them because it's LPAs and that's local planning authorities. Now, I read an article and I'm fuming about it. So if I sound a bit loud, that's why. The article was about several businesses and people that had started them and they were making money already and they weren't raising animals they were mainly growing produce to sell in vegetable boxes to local communities some of them 140 a week that sort of thing and one of them was growing flowers now these people weren't charlatans when people just trying to make a quick buck off growing a small farm and then building a house and being off. They weren't like that. They were actual people who wanted to be a farmer and in the farming world. Now, what happened to these people is disgusting because it wasted so much of their life trying to get the right to live on the land. And these are the silver lining to the, uh, these video guys, so stick with me on it. These people had spent thousands of pounds on planning consultants, thousands of hours and hundreds of hours dealing with the local planning authorities. The amount of stress they went through now we have enough stress in our daily lives as it is in this day and age. We don't need any more. And this is why people give up when they're trying to start a small farm. So these farmers were making profits. Sometimes the profits were easily enough to sustain them. But every time each one of them tried to do the right thing, and put in for planning permission to live on the land, even if it was temporary planning permission for the three years to show that they can make a profit, they were refused. But like I say, there's a silver lining. Now guys, these people had spent that much money and that many man hours that could have went into those small farms you wouldn't want to do it with any other business. Now, if you're starting another business, you might have an office you go to, and then when you leave the office, your business is over with. Well, farming is totally different. You might have to be up your farm, 
first thing on the morning, five o'clock, when everyone else is sleeping in bed. And you might not leave your farm till 10 o'clock at night. Now imagine trying to bring up a family and run a farm at the same time. Now people with families do want to start a farm and why can't, shouldn't they? They should be allowed to start a small farm and they shouldn't have to spend millions of pounds buying hundreds and thousands of acres, which none of us can really afford and imagine the mortgage on that. But the council said that they don't need to live on the land. But living on the land is what brings down the cost of living, which you can put into your small farm. Now, not every business in the world has to make huge profits to be a successful business. And the government, being hypocritical as they are, living healthy life, eat healthy foods, get some exercise, that sort of thing. Yet when it comes to wanting to start a small farm, which will give you all of that, believe me, they won't allow it. There's a department in the government that says you can't live on that piece of land. Now, I don't think people should just move on a piece of land that's a bare piece of land. They should actually start the farm, like I started my farm, putting the buildings up, getting your stock in, that sort of thing. And then if they do get planning, then there should be an agricultural tie to all the buildings that they build and the house. So that'll keep the people, the developers, trying to make a quick book by building a house, saying they're going to start a small farm, from starting a small farm and selling the house. So these people had started businesses. One of them was selling flowers, doing really well. And the others were organic farmers. None of them were raising animals, like I say. They were not doing that sort of thing because some of them didn't have that amount of land. But even the ones that were doing 140 boxes of vegetables a week, put in for planning permission for a small barn. That's it, a small barn. And they were refused. Now I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video so you can read the article yourself and read it all. And you'll understand what the local planning authorities are like and what it's going to take for you to get the right to live on the farm. And this is why I always say, guys, start your small farm, get some infrastructure in place, get your business plan written out, get your numbers down, how are you going to market your small farm and that sort of thing, and then just move on to that farm in a caravan and then deal with it afterwards. Because that's what a couple of them did, well, one of them did, and he didn't have to spend the tens of thousands of pounds that the others had to spend on consultants, going to court, putting in planning application after planning application. Maybe that's why they refuse you, so they can get more money from us. But this is why you need to subscribe to the channel, guys, so I can go down and lobby the housing minister to change those planning laws so that small farmers get more rights when it comes to actually living on that piece of land. And yes, I might sound a bit angry, because I am. And I am peeved off with what I was reading last night. And I just had to tell you about it. Because you are going to go through a minefield when it comes to living on your small farm. If you put in for planning permission and you want to do it the right way, like putting in for planning permission for an extension on your house, which is nice and easy. Well, in some cases it is, in some cases it isn't. But trying to live on a small farm that you've got and start it into a business and it's making a profit, well, that's a different kettle of fish altogether. Now these people were making good money and every single one of these people who put in for a plan application, do you know what happened? They put in for an appeal. And guess what happened to that appeal? Every one of the local planning authorities' decisions to refuse the planning application were overturned and the government 
body that comes up for the appeal. There's a guy that comes up, or a woman comes up to look at the appeal, look at the farm, and see your paperwork. Overturned all the local planning authorities' decisions to refuse the right to live on that small farm. So each and every one of those people got the right to live on that small farm that they were farming. Because that government appeals officer knew it was starting a business and to grow business you need to be there. Now not every business you need to be there but a farming business definitely you need to be there all the time and these were all growers of produce. So imagine if you've got animals, you certainly need to be there. Because I'll tell you what, if some of my chickens got nicked, well, let's say one flock of pure breeds got nicked, there's 500 quid's worth of birds, in some cases more. And they're out on the field with no protection. So why shouldn't you get the right to live on the land? To protect your animals if they get sick to look after them and this is why you need like I say to subscribe to the channel and people honestly don't go down the traditional route of trying to apply for planning permission because you won't get it honestly because unless I don't know I couldn't even give you the answer to that all I can say is Get your farm, infrastructure in place, get your business plan written up, make sure your numbers are right, and then just move on to the farm, whether it be in a caravan, a log cabin, or something like that, or a set of old stables. Because if you go down that planning route, the legal way, well, should I say, the normal way of going down the planning route system. Now, it's not illegal to move on a piece of land, and if someone comes, then you just have to put in for a retrospective plan application. And you know what, guys? They're very, very reluctant to evict you from that caravan. If you've got nowhere else to go, they ain't going to evict you from that caravan, especially if you've got a family with kids, and especially if you're starting this farm. But it's getting onto there if you go through the actual planning system itself. You need to move on it. And once you move on it, then they can't get you off it. And then if you're after appeal, the appeals officer will come and see what you're doing. Think, yeah, there's no reason why they shouldn't be on the land. And they'll overturn the local planning officer's decision to refuse you the right to live on your land. And it can be just one, one of them that refuses you. So you might have a vote like they did on this document that I read and it was six to seven that they couldn't live on the land so six of the councillors said yeah and seven of them said no so it was down to one of them anyway guys I just wanted to make this video about what I read last night like I said I'll leave a link to it in the description and like I said I'd like to know your thoughts on me starting a Patreon page because I want to make better videos and like I say answering all these questions on social media because on social media I'm getting lots of messages and talking to people and on phones and it's taking my time away from my farm but I still want to help you guys and you don't need planning consultants that will charge you thousands honestly you need people like me who've been there, done it, seen people do it, and know how to actually work the planning system. So guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, and subscribe to the channel. We need every sub we can, so that we can actually make a petition up, get down there, lobby the housing minister. I'll go myself, I'll do it myself. And if you want to see more videos, then hit the bell button. So until next time, guys, my name's Craig. You've been watching A Small Farmer Life. Make sure you take care of yourself, and most of all, take care of the family. Bye for now. See ya.